Channel 4 Sports presents University of Colorado Football. Today, from Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska, it's the University of Colorado Buffaloes versus the University of Nebraska Cornhuskers. Today's game is brought to you by the Public Service Company of Colorado, by Samsonite, by Central Banks, by Coast to Coast, Colorado's hardware store, by Miller Stockman, all proud companies for Colorado, and also by Aurora Lincoln Mercury, and by Commercial Federal Savings and Loan. Now, here are Ron Zappolo and Dave Logan. On a cold, windy afternoon in Lincoln, Nebraska, it's 19th-ranked Colorado versus 7th-ranked Nebraska. Hi, everybody. Ron Zappolo along with Dave Logan. And Dave, the game needs no build-up. Biggest game of the year for CU. And the first time in years, they come to Lincoln feeling they have a legitimate chance to win. Well, I think certainly CU feels they've got an excellent opportunity. They have not fared very well here in Lincoln. At 7-2, and two, Colorado could assure themselves of a place in the bowl should they win today. There's speculation if they don't get this victory, they might find themselves at home in bowl season. So a lot of pressure. Nebraska, on the other hand, can go to the Orange Bowl, forget this game if they beat Oklahoma next Saturday. It is very windy down on the field. What effect will that have on Colorado's passing game, which many people feel they have to throw the football to a chance to win? I think that hurts to you if the wind really kicks up, and it's been doing that the entire afternoon. CU is going to have to throw the football, and they're going to have to do it efficiently if they're going to beat Nebraska. On the other hand, Nebraska may not need to throw the football. They're overpowering offensively, dominant up front. I think the win will be a factor and a negative factor for CU. Colorado coming in off one of the most impressive victories of the year at the road against Missouri, a team that a couple weeks earlier played Nebraska head-to-head -head in here. And no doubt about it, CU's had a chance to watch those films. Missouri came in here blitz Steve Taylor quite a bit, 80% of the time. I don't think you'll see CU blitzing quite that much, but they'll be aggressive defensively. We're excited. Should be a great ball game. Glad you're with us. Come on back for the kickoff. Have you ever wondered what a bag... ...factor much lower than that 50 degrees, the... 161st consecutive sellout here at Memorial Stadium. Some 74,000 strong on hand. It is a sea of red, as you can see, surrounding the AstroTurf here at Memorial Stadium. Ken Culbertson will kick off. 33, Dana Brinson, and 21, Richard Bell are deep. We are underway from Lincoln. This one to Brinson. From his own end zone. He's got a hole. Across the 30. All the way out across the 40. Before Dave McLuhan makes the tackle from Nebraska. With excellent field position for their first drive. They will take over at their own 41-yard line. Nebraska offensively. The veteran Steve Taylor. Ken Clark, Richard Bell, Brian Carpenter, the running backs. Bell, actually the wing back. Veteran offensive line. Sledge, Keeler, Young, Nelson, and Glazer. First and 10 from the 41. Here's the pitch to Clark. No room, and down he goes right at the line of scrimmage. Arthur Walker was there to make sure he went no further. No game, second and 10. Colorado defensively. Alfred Williams and Canavis McGee, those bookend outside backers at defensive ends. They both had terrific seasons. Walker, Reinhardt, and Hayes in the middle. Bill McCartney wants them to gain some weight in the offseason. Deluzio and Jones, the linebacker. Dion Higgins, the freshman. Now the starter with McQuillan, Tim James, and Bruce Young. Second down and 10. Here's Clark again. This time a hole. Young hits him, but Clark drives all the way out to the 49. It's an eight-yard pickup, make it third and two. Ken Clark, 5'9", 200 pounds, junior from Omaha. Nebraska comes into the game averaging 405 yards per game rushing. Ken Clark has 1,200 yards during the course of the season. Certainly, they feel up front they've got a decisive advantage. They average 272 pounds per man offensively to 248 per man on the defensive side of the ball. So Nebraska feels like they can control the tempo of the game with the running game. Third and two, here's Clark again. He's got a first down. He's to the Colorado 45. And Avis McGee makes the stop there, but it's a first down for Nebraska. We've just started here from Lincoln. 13.37 to go in the first quarter. 
Colorado kicked off to Nebraska. They have a first down. They're at the Colorado 45. One of the things you can look for, certainly when Nebraska gets the football, their ability to move it on the ground. Last year when they came into Boulder, 62 rushes, 419 yards on the ground. Keith Jones, who is no longer with the Cornhuskers, 26 carries, 248 yards. They dominate you up front. On the option, Taylor will keep it, nowhere to go. The pitch for Clark, and he's knocked out of bounds. At the Colorado 43, Poniflet was there. It's important for CU defensively to have a, a reasonable amount of success early to not get buried up front. Linebackers are very, very important. You're seeing Michael Jones and Don Deluzio trying to get off the block, keep their feet, and a good job by a lot of folks in white jerseys that time of staying up off the ground. Nebraska up front knocks people down, and once they do, they've got explosive enough backs to get through big, big holes. Nebraska with a second down and nine at the Colorado 43. Carpenter is the fullback. Clark is the eyeback. On the delay, this is Clark. No room. Poniflet knocks him down at the 44. At the loss of one, it'll be third and ten. And apparently the Colorado defense ready to play this afternoon, Dave. Well, when you're undersized and you come in against a team like this, you've got to make things happen defensively, and you probably have to take a, a, a few more chances than you'd like to do. That time, Poniflet from the corner blitz. They read the sprint draw, and they force Nebraska into third and long. Favorite receiver for Taylor is Morgan Gregory out of Manuel High School in Denver. He is wide to the right, the top of your screen. Taylor's first attempted pass of the afternoon is for Gregory, and it's incomplete. And Poniflet was there. And Colorado has stopped Nebraska. It's fourth and ten. Colorado a 19-point underdog. They come out of the first series in good shape. It's not going to be an afternoon, as we told you at the outset, that is going to be conducive to throwing the football. That time he saw Steve Taylor a bit high, and Nebraska's forced to punt. John Croker will punt for Nebraska. 29 punts this year. He's averaging a little over 41 yards a kick. M.J. Nelson. Deep for Colorado. This one will be inside the 20. Bounces back. Kicks the Colorado bounce out to the CU 21. So Colorado has stopped Nebraska with one first down, a 22-yard punt. There's the offense, and Essie, the quarterback, Pittsburgh, Pritchard, and the sophomore, Eric Bianami, who now has 1,210 yards rushing, but his third best in CU history in a single season. He's had seven 100-yard games. First down, here's the enemy. Eric's got a couple. He's out to the 23. Top of the pile there, you can see getting off is number 89, Broderick Thomas. He is the All-American backer, 6'3", 250, a senior from Houston. He's got eight sacks this year and 81 tackles. Both lead the team. There you see him. He's up there with Willie Griffin, Lawrence Pete, Kent Wells, Jeff Mills, Caliendo, and Etienne. There Etienne make it to linebackers. Hicks, Cooper, Jackson, and Fryer. He's a cousin of... Irving Fryer. Anessi keeps it. Here's the pitch to the enemy. Eric tries to turn the corner across the 25 all the way out to the 30 before Tim Jackson, the free safety number four, drove him out. CU obviously trying to get the football into the hands of that man, Eric Bienemy. Last year, CU 44 rushes 147 yards. That will not cut it this afternoon. Good blocking up front, as you see. A lot of red folks on the ground at the enemy with enough speed to turn the corner. CU comes into this game thinking they can move the football and the Cornhuskers be very methodical and thus keep Nebraska off the field offensively. It is third down and about a yard and a half to go. The fake to the enemy. Anessi to throw. He's looking deep for Campbell. Incomplete. A fine defensive play by Charles Fryer, who tipped it away from Campbell at the last second. Fryer appears to be limping off, so Colorado will have to punt, but obviously, Dave, they're going to open it up here early. Well, I think Bill McCartney realizes they've got to score points this afternoon if they're going to be able to keep Nebraska off of them. You see a pretty good play that time by Fryer. Third and one, CU so goes for the home run deep in their own territory. Keith English, the nation's leading punter, is into the ball game. This is Richard Bell back at his 17. And he's knocked out at the 27. Tim James knocked him out. 
So each team has had it once after a 53-yard punt and a 10-yard return. 11.34 to go in the first quarter. We are scoreless in Lincoln. see you today. Taylor has trouble with the exchange. Here is Clark. Deluzio wraps him up across the Nebraska 30 to Nebraska 31. Pick up a four, second down and six. Dave, Nebraska, as you well know, having played at Colorado, owns the series between the two. They've beaten them 33 times, lost this 12, one tie. They lead Colorado 17 to five in Lincoln. Nebraska has won 24 of the last 26 versus CU, but those are statistics in their history now. It's scoreless. Here is Clark again. Nice spin move. He's out across the 30 to the 34. Cole Hayes, number 82, the junior defensive end, made the tackle. Clark has carried it seven of Nebraska's eight offensive plays. So you can see right away they want to go to Clark, who has 1,165 yards on the ground this year. He's averaged 6.5 a carry. He scored 11 touchdowns. What they don't want to do is take a chance of any kind of turnover. They're very, very patient. They feel like they can move the football on you piece by piece. And sooner or later, they'll weigh you down. Third down and three. Up the middle, a big hole for Carpenter. He's got a first down across the 40 to the 44. James and Young, the safeties, made the tackle. Carpenter, a 200-pound junior. He's averaging seven and a half yards a carry. But well, the fullback game has hurt Colorado in the past couple of weeks. Oklahoma used it extensively in Boulder. You'll see the quick slip. Carpenter is into the secondary before CU can get to him. When you've got players like Clark and Taylor that really can hurt you on the perimeter, more times than not, you can slip that fullback through virtually untouched. Of course, Nebraska, 9-1, their only loss early in the season. Out in L.A. to UCLA. Here is Clark. Another hole. Clark spinning, turning into Colorado territory at the 48. Alfred Williams was there along with Tim James. Well, the misdirection play in Ken Clark follows some good blocking up front. And you can see the hole before James can get to him. Clark is big enough at about 5'10", 200 pounds to break a lot of tackles, got a low center of gravity. And yet quick enough once he bounces outside that he can leave you as well. Clark, 5'9", 200 pounds. Second down and two from the Colorado 48. 9.25 to go in this first quarter. Here is Clark. He's got a big hole. Clark all the way down to the CU 29. Tim James made the tackle. And already, Dave, you see the problem. James and Young are making all the tackles on Ken Clark. Another Nebraska first down. Ken Clark uh, actually coming into this season was a back at the Tyrese Knox. A lot of folks thought Knox would be the top eye back. Knox had shared times with Keith Jones last year, but Ken Clark has simply been too good to keep him out of the lineup. Does an excellent job of following Carpenter, the fullback. Good blocking up front. And again, when you're running through holes like that, and as you mentioned, Ron, when your safeties are having to make a lot of tackles, you know you're gaining a good deal of yardage. First and 10 from the 29. This time the handoff is to the first back at Carpenter. He's to the 25. Deluzio, first man to hit him. Nebraska's philosophy up front is simply to control the football. Obviously, they score a lot of points. They're leading the nation in that category, 46 points per game. But they want to move the football, get a lot of first downs. They've done that the last 10 or 15 years. By doing so, obviously, they keep the offense or the opposition off the field, and they simply wear you down up front with those big calls. 8.25 to go in the first quarter. Nebraska with a second and six from the Colorado 25. Brinson is in motion. The pitch to Clark. Not this time. Deluzio hit him first, and he's joined by about five teammates at the Colorado 25. Ron, I mentioned about keeping the, uh, keeping the ball, control of the football game. All the plays they run, 81 plays against Texas A&M, 71 against Oklahoma State, 84 against Arizona State. And for those of you that are unfamiliar, it's, you usually run between 60 and 65 plays offensively if you've had a great game. They run a lot of plays and simply wear out. Clark is shaken up. He is on the sidelines as Nebraska faced with a third and six. That is Bell in motion. Carpenter, the lone running back. Taylor looking to throw. He's 0 for 1. Here comes the rush, and down he goes. Cole Hayes. 
makes the sack of Taylor. But apparently a flag down at the 31, and it's going to be an illegal motion on Nebraska. Colorado will decline it, and Nebraska will be faced with a fourth down. The Cornhuskers send a man in motion, actually had two guys moving at once, an illegal shift as you take a look at today's officials. And a big play by Cole Hayes as Steve Taylor trying to roll to the side of the motion. Nebraska has run this particular scheme for many, many years. Been very successful with it, and a big stand by the CU defense. John Coker on the punt again for Nebraska. That is only the eighth sack that uh, Nebraska has suffered this year. This being their 10th game. Nebraska, a very balanced team, but they're not a club that likes to throw the football. They like to throw it when they want to after they've established the running game, not when they're forced to. On a scrimmage, the 36, a line drive punt that bounces into the end zone. So Colorado has stopped Nebraska. They'll take over on their own 20 with a little more than seven minutes to go in this first quarter. He had his game face on. He knows what it's like to beat Nebraska. You can tell he is ready. Well, this easily would be the biggest win of his career, and he certainly has pointed his CU Buffaloes toward Nebraska each and every year. Hand off up the middle to Kissick. Out across the 22 to the 23. Chris Caliendo, number 49, the weak side linebacker, made the tackle. Pick up a three, second down and seven. Will you tell me and tell the viewers what it is that makes this such a heated rivalry between these two teams? Well, I think over the years, Nebraska has been so dominant that it's easy to, to have uh, some hard feelings toward folks that you never have a chance to beat. When CU beat Nebraska in Boulder a couple of years ago, 20 to 10, it was like a big weight had been taken off their shoulders. But they have to come here and establish that they can win in this stadium. They haven't done that recently. Second down and six from the 24. Campbell's the wide receiver. Pritchard in motion. Here's the enemy. Breaks one tackle. Breaks two tackles. Eric is close to a first down. I think he's about a foot short. The feeling coming in here this afternoon by the Buffaloes was that they could handle Nebraska up front. They're interior people. You see a nice cutback as at the end misses the enemy. Willie Griffin, Lawrence Pete, Kent Wells, the down three for the Cornhuskers. You don't see any Danny Nunes. You don't see any Neil Smiths. And they've had, when I say they, the Cornhuskers have had dominant folks up front for a good many years. Not the case this year. Good players, but not great ones. It is a first down for Colorado. The nose of the ball is at the 30. So their first first down of the afternoon. The enemy. Not much room. Thomas is after him. He has him at the Nebraska 32. The two-yard gain. Nebraska, their leading tackler, has eight sacks. Of course, you played uh, for four years. I know, you, how many times did you uh, did your team beat Nebraska? <laughs> well, since they, uh, since they hadn't won a game since 1967, I believe, before 86, that would probably give us 0 for 4 as well. Then, then you took the collar. We had our problems. We did take the collar. Okay. Nice Second. of you to bring that up. I want you. I'm sorry, and I won't bring it up the rest of the afternoon. <laughs> I'll ask you about the Cleveland Browns. As there's movement in the offensive line. Flags everywhere, but no whistle. So an SC dumps it out to the enemy, and Eric falls down at the 26. It's going to be offsides against Nebraska. A nice job that time up front by Eric Norgard snapping the football once a Cornhusker got into the neutral zone. And in essence, a free play for CU. Oh, make it second down and three. They'll put it at the 37. Lawrence Pete, number 96, the nose guard, was offside. Last home game today for 31 Nebraska seniors. Of course, they finish next week at Oklahoma. How much of an advantage? Offside. Offside. Defense. Defense. Second down. Is it for CU to catch Nebraska the week before the Oklahoma game? You can see the play as the nose guard will jump into the neutral zone. I don't think it's an advantage at all. I think Nebraska realizes that CU certainly, if not on the same level, is a very, very competitive team that's going to take an excellent effort from them to win here in Lincoln. Second down and three for the Bucks. They have it at their own 37. The enemy goes right up the middle. ATN hit him first. Eric still moving. Across the 40 to the 41. That should be enough for another Colorado first down. 
And again up front with Norgard and Muhlenberg, Vanderpool, Garten, and Coleman. CU believes they can run between the tackles, take away some of that great outside speed the Nebraska defense enjoys. Here's Eric Bieniemy, 5'9", about 195 pounds. He slips in, and again, strong enough that he simply keeps driving. He's tough to tackle. Very, very low center of gravity. Bieniemy, just an excellent back. He's had a superb year. Eric averaging 5.7 a carry, 134 yards a ball game, having just a sensational sophomore season. This is Kissick. He's to the Colorado 43. Nebraska interior line, Willie Griffin, Lawrence, Pete, and Kent Wells were all there. Wells, 91, made the first hit. See you a little bit like Nebraska in that they've gone to the power eye. It gives them a lot of options run. They can run some of the wishbone attack, and yet they can feature a back like Eric the enemy. They also can throw the football more effectively from the power eye, and it will be certainly important for them to have to throw the football, but throw it when they want to and not be forced into long throwing situations. Second down and seven. The ball is on the 44. And again, we've got flags everywhere as Anessi throws it incomplete. You know, even though that Nebraska has dominated the series, the last four years have been very competitive. CU won in 86, but last year, very, very competitive game as it was in 85. Well, they've been competitive as we see the offside call against Nebraska simply because the CU defense has kept them in every game. The Buffaloes have scored 41 points in the last four years. That's not going to cut it. You've got to score more than 10 points to be able to beat this club. Coming in, they felt like Nebraska was a little bit jumpy up front, and there was some thought that maybe the Cornhuskers even had the Buffalo snap count last year. So you can see in the first couple of series, but Bill McCartney is very dead count, and Sal and Essie has gone on a later count. Plus, Eric Norgard, the senior center, has done a great job. He's had five quick snaps the last couple of weeks. As soon as he sees that there's a problem that somebody jumps, Norgard snaps the football, the right thing to do. And Essie, the pitch outside. This is Flanagan, and he's nailed for a loss by Chris Caliendo. J.J. Flanagan, back after a week's suspension. Flanagan has great speed, but you'll watch the inside linebacker, Caliendo. As soon as he sees that's the option, he actually gets past Kissick before Kissick can get the block. And now you've got Blazik from the outside, Caliendo from the inside. Nowhere to run for J.J. Flanagan. Blazik, an academic All-American. Third down and five from the 46, 305 to go in the first quarter. He just joined us at scoreless. Each team has had it twice. Here's an SC. Sal on the run. He's to the 48, and that should be enough. The Nebraska 48 for a first down. Caliendo made the stop, and it is a Colorado first down. These are the kind of plays you have to be able to make. Unless he goes back to play action, everybody is covered, and yet he has enough composure to realize exactly how many yards he needs to get the yards and keep the drive going. You can't go back and expect things to be just the way you'd like them each and every time you drop back to pass. Sometimes you've got to create. That was the case for an effort. You saw a shot there of Tom Osborne, the second winningest active coach in college football. Behind only Barry Switzer. Anessi on first and 10. Will he pitch or keep it? He'll keep it. Across the 45 to the 44, Charles Fryer, number 10, made the hit on Sal. It'll be a pickup of four, make it second and six. Colorado, I would imagine, has to be happy with this first quarter. The butterflies are out. They know they can play now with Nebraska. And especially after the fine kickoff return at the start of the football game when Nebraska took over on their own 40-yard line. And as he really makes this thing go, he's turned into a, a good thrower and a guy, again, that picked up big, big yardage when it's necessary. He's had the ball for five minutes on this drive. It's a fumbled snap. It's loose. And we'll wait until they unstack it. Colorado keeps possession. You can already see it's getting a little tempers beginning to flare down there on the field. Well, a lot of stake for both clubs. For CU, a chance for national respectability, and as we said at the top, a chance to assure themselves of a birth and a bowl. And as he never got the football, and CU very fortunate to come up with it. Nebraska, on the other hand, 9-1. They're looking for next week, of course, when they have to go to Norman to play the Oklahoma Sooners. But again, they know CU has made great strides the last two or three years. 
And I think Tom Osborne has a lot of respect for Bill McCartney and the job that he's done. You saw that shot of McCartney. You can see how his pant legs were blowing in the wind. There's another, another fumbled snap, and Messi appears to be on this one. He is. And twice, Norgard and Anessi have botched the snap. After I was just complimenting Eric for his heads-up play, and that has ruined this drive at the Nebraska 45. Mistakes like that you simply can't make. They were lucky to get back both fumbles, but when you have a drive and you work as hard as you've had to work to move 35 yards or so, boy, you've got to make sure that at least you get the snap and give yourself a chance to be successful. So, English is on the nation's leading punter. That is Brinson, number 33 for Nebraska. This one appears to be headed into the end zone, and it is. 30 seconds to go in the first quarter. Each team has had it twice. We're scoreless. We'll return to Lincoln in just a minute. Zero. Twice, defenses have held the offense. Ken Clark wrapped up immediately at the 20 for no gain. Michael Jones hit him first, number 59, the junior linebacker out of San Diego. I think what you're seeing early for the CU defense, an extremely active defense and trying to take advantage of their quickness. They're not nearly as big, 248 pounds per man as opposed to 272 on the offensive line for the Cornhuskers. But yet when you stunt and when you move people around and when you give uh, a target that's not so easy to hit up front, you can create some problems for a bigger club. That's the end of the first quarter as Colorado and Nebraska are dead even. We played a quarter at Lincoln. Colorado nothing, Nebraska. Oh, a nice move that time. Check that, Dave. That's Tyrese Knox, number 34. Not Ken Clark, excuse me. Knox, his first carry of the afternoon. Good for 12 yards. And there's a guy that uh, most people thought here in Lincoln would be the featured back starting this year. Of course, Clark was shaken up on the last series. Carpenter's got it. Deluzio, number 49, wraps him up immediately, just shy of the 35-yard line. Again, what you're seeing early is Nebraska with not much respect for the CU defense. They feel they can run on them with the eye backs and the fullback. I wouldn't be surprised to see Steve Taylor get involved in the offense fairly soon. Let's go to the sidelines now and Bobby Anderson. A moment ago, man, you saw J.J. Flanagan in a tailback for the Buffaloes. Eric Bieniemy has a pulled right hamstring. He's testing it on the sidelines. We'll have to wait and see if he can get back in the ball game. Back to Ron and Dave. Thanks, Bobby. Second down. Taylor throws and it's incomplete. Brinson drops the football. Make that Turner, not Brinson. Turner number 22. You can see our first quarter stats pretty much even. Nebraska a little bit uh, more on the ground, but neither team has completed a pass, and we are scoreless. Nebraska with a third and eight from the 35. Nebraska in a situation like this, they love to motion people to try to flood one zone. Usually get Steve Taylor outside where he has the option to either run or pass and take advantage of that great athletic ability. Gregory and Brinson, Gregory and Brinson the wide receivers. Knox and Carpenter, the running back. Play action. Taylor steps up, and he's hit from behind. He fumbles the football. Nebraska's got it. Alfred Williams. Let's see if he's got it. Nebraska has it. Nebraska has it. They left the point. Alfred Williams hit Taylor from behind. Taylor, who was sacked just twice in nine games, has been sacked already in the first 16 minutes. Here. Well, what you don't realize, since you don't play CU each and every week, or a chance to play them more than one time a year, is how quick those outside people are. They haven't been this quick in years past. Taylor goes back, and that's not a lot of time to throw. He feels like he's got forever. Here comes Alfred Williams from the backside. They've got great quickness on the outside in McGee and Williams. CU's defense certainly rising to the occasion here as Coker puts his foot into it, a low line drive kick. JoJo Collins with an excellent return. He's back all the way to the 40-yard line. 48-yard kick by Croker and a 21-yard return. This telecast, an exclusive presentation of KCNC and the National Broadcasting Company, is intended for the private use of our audience and a reproduction or rebroadcast of this telecast without the express written consent of KCNC is prohibited. Colorado with their best field position of the day. They take over first and 10 from their own 40. Flanagan in for the injured the enemy, and Essie throws and it's knocked down. 
Looked like Willie Griffin or Thomas on the left-hand side of the line. They got a hand on it. As Bobby Anderson told us, the enemy pulled hamstring. Well, Broderick Thomas is an excellent linebacker. He is a finalist for the Lombardi Trophy and the Butkus Award. Would love to have the Lombardi Trophy as that uh, is picked from the Houston Rotary Club, the top lineman or linebacker, and Broderick Thomas from Houston. Second down and 10 from the 40. Colorado in a passing set now as Anessi pitches to Flanagan. J.J. makes one man miss, cuts it up the middle for good yardage. He's in the Nebraska territory at the 48-yard line. A first down for Colorado. Lawrence Peace, a nose tackle, made the stop, and Flanagan's got to come through if the enemy cannot come back. Well, here's Flanagan making a wrong decision and turning it into a right one. He should have kept running. He fakes at the end off his feet and then has enough speed to get up through there. When you run a play like that and you've got a linebacker at the point of attack and you've got speed like Flanagan does, you've got to take that thing to the sideline and force number 47, Leroy Etienne, to run with you. That time he stops, but he's able to make a great move and leave Etienne on his knees. How many moves did Flanagan use there for that team? Well, he's got a bunch of them. He really has, has not had a, much of a chance to play this year, but he has great athletic ability. Of course, he was over 100 yards against Iowa State. And that's he rolling out. Thomas gives chase. South throws and it's incomplete. It was nearly intercepted down there. Reggie Cooper and Tim Jackson, the safeties, were both there. We get to have a completed pass in this game. And Broderick Thomas was putting a lot of pressure on Sal and Essie. I think what you're seeing now, CU forced to open things up a bit, especially if Eric Vietnamese is not able to come back into the contest. They'll have to throw, they'll have to run a reverse, they'll have to get all the tricks out of the bag in order to move the football. Oklahoma leads Missouri, 10-0 first quarter, elsewhere in the Big Eight. Colorado State leads New Mexico, 7-0 first quarter. Second and 10 from the 48. Vanessi hands it off to Kissick. Sal running hard but being pushed back. They're giving forward progress to about the 47. 96 feet is the first one there. 220 pound senior from Wichita. ATM on the last off the pot. Nebraska giving up 124 yards per game this season on the ground. They're second in the Big Eight in rushing defense. And an overall defense, they uh, a terrific first place, giving up 277 yards per game. So maybe not quite as good as they've been in the past in terms of their dominance up front, but a very good collection of athletes. Kissick is out. Hemingway, number 22, is in for the Buffs on third and nine from the Nebraska 47. Vanessi looking with time, and he overshoots JoJo Collins. There was a missed assignment there because Collins cut his route to the sidelines and Sal threw it down the field. It looked like a side adjustment on a blitz and JoJo ran about a 17 yard out. Sal expected him either to go out and up or simply run a fly. They missed connections on that particular throw. English on the punt. Bell and Brinson deep for Nebraska. Bell 21, Brinson 33. 11.28 to go in the first half here in Lincoln. We are scoreless. Two top 20 teams slugging it out is English. Hopes to get a good roll and doesn't. Bounces into the end zone. Second time that English has done that this afternoon. 11-19 to go in this first half. Colorado and Nebraska are scoreless. And Nate Patty, the Colorado West ID, points out each team had seven first down plays and averaged about, averaged about two yards on first down. Here's Carpenter. He's out to about the 23 where Michael Jones makes the tackle. And again, when you're struggling a bit offensively, I find it hard to believe that Steve Taylor has not been involved in the offense on the ground a bit more. Keep in mind, he is sixth in the Big 8 in rushing, over 700 yards, 12 touchdowns, and he's averaging nearly six yards per carry. They have not run the option, and what that says is simply they feel like they can knock see you off the ball, run the eye back and the fullback, and gain four or five yards whenever they want to. Well, Clark is back in the game, so that is the good news for Nebraska. Hopefully, be enemy there. To use big gun will come back for them. Is Taylor rolling across the 25 and out of bounds at the 27 to pick up a six? And Avis McGee ran him out. It'll be third and three. Steve Taylor really hasn't gotten off, hasn't gotten started this afternoon. Well, he hasn't had a chance. He really has not had many plays designed for him to carry the football. That time, a rollout throw and just to take advantage of the athletic ability. You see today's attendance 
162 consecutive sellouts here in Nebraska. They certainly support their football team. With the sacks, Taylor has three carries for minus eight yards. Yes, they do support their football team. It is a sea of red here in Lincoln. A little patch of black and gold down in the right-hand corner of the end zone. Carpenter again. Deluzio makes the tackle, and I think he's a little bit short, Ron. I think he's a, about three or four inches short where they place the football. And you'll see how much respect Nebraska has for the CU defense by the decision they make they're going to punt the football. Well, they've got a little respect. Well, that, you, that really is a no decision right there. <laughs> On your own 29-yard line, your defense is playing well. Both offenses have struggled. You want to punt the ball and force CU to go the length of the field. The CU needs to be very careful here. They don't get lulled into thinking they can win this game with their defense alone. Sooner or later, Nebraska tends to wear you out. You've got to put some points on the board if you want to win the game. Campbell and Collins are deep. Coach's punt will drive JoJo back to his 17. Not much room. He hangs onto the ball, and down he goes at the CU 23. Coker, a 54-yard punt. Collins. Seven-yard return. Of course, the Bill McCartney show Sunday night, 11 o'clock. My partner and good friend Dave Logan will be there, and Colorado can win this game. It'll be the highest-rated Bill McCartney show of all time. It's Sunday at 11, right here on Channel 4. Big day of sports tomorrow. We'll talk about it as the day progresses. Flanagan up the middle, a big hole for JJ. Across the 35, out to the 37. A 13-yard gain in the first down. Lorenzo Hicks made the tackle, and J.J. Flanagan, one of the forgotten men. Well, again, one of the reasons CU went to the power eye was to take advantage of the great tailback. When you run the sprint draw, a defense has a tendency to run everything to the outside. That time, Flanagan able to slip back. A, a pro team that runs that exclusively are used to the Seattle Seahawks. And get you going on that sprint draw, and Jim Zorn would take it out and wind up having, handing it back to a halfback. That's right. JJ again. Across the 40. Up to about the 42. And Ron, we should mention the field is uh, a little bit wet. It really is not uh, conducive to making good cuts, and I'm wondering if that might be the reason Eric Genemy pulled a hamstring. Lawrence Pete, very active nose guard, the last man off that pile. As you see, Flanagan off to a good start. Didn't play last week, suspended. Most people read about what happened. J.J. involved in an incident to, after that Iowa State game. Second down and six from the 42. Great to have a J.J. Flanagan as a backup. Here he is again, bouncing, twisting, turning in the Nebraska territory at the Husker 49. Another Colorado first down. Planning in a couple of nice runs, but let's give credit up front to the big fellas, Eric Norgard, Garten, and Coleman. When a play is designed to go off right tackle and you can cut it back like that, you know backside you're doing a good job. That would be Coleman and Garten. And again, see you up front. You'll be able to see, watch from the left side as they seal everything down. Good block by Norgard. Muhlenberg comes down, and Flanagan has a lot of room to run. 72, Vanderpool with a good block as well on first down is Kissick. Make that Hemingway. Down to the Nebraska 45. Kelly Endo, number 49, made the tackle. Second and a long five. And as we mentioned last year, in Boulder, the Buffalo 226 total yards. They could not sustain anything on the ground. And at that time, the wishbone team, when you couldn't do that, you had basically no chance to win. Nebraska, a good defense, not a great defense, up front. I begin to wonder if the enemy's going to come back. Missed a couple of series. And Essie on the option. The pitch to Flanagan gets by ATN. JJ's to the 43 where Lorenzo Hicks, the left corner, made the stop. A couple of yards. It'll be third and three. Say, this crowd is out of the ball game right now. Exactly what Colorado wanted to quiet down the 75,000. The Huskers not playing with a lot of emotion. The crowd doesn't feel a lot of emotion as well. And you have to give CU credit for that. They've come out in the first half and really established themselves both offensively and defensively. But if they go down and score here, certainly a lot of pressure, at least early, will be placed on the shoulders of the corner. Seven minutes to go in the half. Nothing, nothing. Third down and three from the 43. Here's the handoff to Flanagan. A big hole in 
JJ loses the football. Picks it up and is tackled at the 20, but a tough break as Flanagan was home free. There was nobody within 10 yards of J.J. Flanagan. I've probably seen this two or three times in some 30 years of watching football. He's got nobody in front of him. All of a sudden, the ball just comes out of his hand. And Flanagan does a masterful job of finding the handle. I mean, folks, when he breaks this tackle right here, he's, he's got nobody in front of him. It is over, and all of a sudden, the ball just pops out of his hand. A mysterious red goat comes out of the stand. 91, Kent Wells has uh, made the tackle on Flanagan. Colorado with first down at the 19. Flanagan running well. Now if he can hang on to the ball. J.J. down near the 15. Hicks and ATN make the stop. ATN 47, Hicks 8. You don't see that often. It reminded me of Smith, the Steeler wide receiver, about 10 years ago on Monday Night Football. Alone going into the end zone as he went to spike it. He dropped it. It's there amazing. Is, there's the enemy up on the sideline next to uh, Bill McCartney, so hopefully Eric is okay. Of course, the way Flanagan is running, they haven't missed Eric the enemy. Campbell is wide to the left. Second down and six. Up the middle of Hemingway. Pulling his way as the flag goes down at the 13. Hemingway and Nebraska 12 were peaked wraps him up. That looks like it's going to be holding. The flag came in a bit late. We'll have to wait and see. You have it accurately diagnosed. Bill McCartney not happy with this call at all. And hopefully we'll have a chance to see a replay that the flag came in a bit late as Hemingway was on his way down. Can you guess from looking at the enemy, how does he look? Well, he looks fine, but that doesn't necessarily mean his leg is fine. Let's see if we can pick it up. As the holding call will come from the official on the right, and it looked like uh, Darren Muhlenberg had one of the Cornhuskers around the leg, so uh, a good call indeed. Muhlenberg, number 63, the junior from Lakewood. Ball is back at the Nebraska 23 as Eric Bienemy trots back onto the field. If you look at Osborne, so Bienemy, okay, he's back. What a job Flanagan did in relief of Bienemy. His only mistake fumbling away is sure touchdown. Here's second and 15 with the enemy in the game. You look to pick up half of it or you look for some sort of special play that the enemy had practiced the entire week. Campbell is wide to the left. Pritchard in motion. Anessi, a reverse to Campbell. He's around one man, but there's nowhere to go and Jeff's going to be hit in front for a big loss. Back at the Nebraska 43-yard line. That'll be a 19-yard loss. Jeff Mills, junior defensive end, well, here's a special play, and it's reverse to Campbell. Good penetration up front. As you can see, Nebraska is seven, eight, nine yards deep by the time Campbell gets the football. He's got nowhere to go. He's got to lay down and take a loss. That's Mills, 42. Finally making a tackle along with Thomas. A 19-yard loss for Colorado. Which, you know, this is one of the strangest drives I can remember. They drive the football. They actually have a, a touchdown in their hands. They fumble it. They go backwards 19 yards. It's third and 33. As you can see, the ball is on the 43. Hemingway's got nowhere to go. He'll be thrown down right at the line of scrimmage. And Colorado has wasted a golden opportunity. Jeff Mills made the tackle. Well, they wasted a sure six point. The ball just disappeared from J.J. Flanagan's hands. Then the Nebraska defense gets involved. And Again, it's a very good defense. It's not uh, a defense that you can move the football consistently on the entire afternoon. What did you call it? Like a red devil coming out of the... I said red ghost, and red, red devil ghost. would be appropriate as well. <laughs> <laughs> 3.58 to go in the half. English will try and punt it out inside the 10. He might, he'll be inside the 20 at the 17-yard line. 3.49 to go in the first half. Colorado and Nebraska remain scoreless. A killer is watching, waiting. Wants to throw on first down with time. He looked for Bell and he was open, but he overshot him. Bruce Young and Deion Figures were there on the coverage. And Nebraska coming out with the twin receivers, that's the set they like to throw from. I think Taylor was forced to throw maybe a little bit sooner than he wanted to due to the pressure from Alfred Williams. 
Taylor is 68 of 130 through the air, Dave, for 1,000 yards. He's thrown 11 touchdowns, had but five intercepted. If you look at Richard Bell. See, the key is they throw when they want to throw. When you force them to throw the football when either behind or in long yardage situations, they are not a great throwing team. Brinson and Bell, both wide to the left. Clark's got room. Poniflet and Canavis McGee combine on the tackle. Clark is across the 25 to the 26 at the pickup of eight. It'll be third and two. We saw J.J. planning on the sprint draw last series. Here comes Ken Clark on basically the same play. It allows a great instinctive runner to more or less pick and hold. That time Clark coming backside. A good job with the Nebraska line of peeling off the Buffaloes on the weak side. And it gives them a short yardage situation. Morgan Gregory now wide to the left. Third and short. Colorado showing blitz. Clark through the hole. He's got a first down and more. Across the 30 to the 31. Flag is down. Michael Jones may have been offside. Three minutes and two seconds to go in a, I think, rather surprising first half. One, that Colorado was right with him, and two, we haven't seen a point yet. <laughs> well, you've got the nation's leading scoring team. Again, at 46 points per game, I certainly thought they would score, and I really felt CU would be able to move the football and score a few points of their own. You give credit to both defensive sides as they've come up with the plays when they've had to. CU with a golden opportunity to score, but give credit to Nebraska. After the fumble, they did what they had to do to keep the Buffs out of the end zone. Nebraska averages 512 yards a game total offense, 404 of those on the ground. They average over six yards to carry, but they're not getting it today. As Taylor looking to throw with time going over the middle, incomplete. He was looking for Nate Turner. Conifut was down there along with Young. Colorado's defense continuing to stop Nebraska. Well, this baby had 69-yard touchdown pass written all over it. it was a nice play action fake caught CU up inside, and had the throw been on the mark from Taylor, Turner would have walked it. I don't believe we have had a completed pass yet in this ballgame. And had you told me that before the game, I would have bet anything Nebraska would have been on there. A broken play as Taylor bumps into his own man and Tom Reinhardt in the 97 wrapped him up on the top of the scoreboard. Nebraska certainly didn't have to throw the football. Judging from the previous stats of the games this year, they win when they run and they haven't been able to run effectively, at least not consistently this year. Good penetration by CU you see up front. As Carpenter and Taylor bump into each other, Taylor a little bit short, looked like he wanted to take the ball from Carpenter a bit quick. Good penetration by Tom Reinhardt and Cole Hay. Taylor and Anessi are both 0 for 4. It's third and 11 for Nebraska with 2.05 to go in the half. Taylor is going to look over the middle, completes it to Carpenter. Carpenter loses the football. Poniflet's got it, and down he goes at the 35. Colorado will have it first and 10 at the Nebraska 39-yard line. The first turnover of the ball game. Well, Nebraska's been very, very good this year in terms of their turnovers. They've had a couple of bad games, the Missouri game and the UCLA game. But here, Keith Poniflet picks up the fumble. He's smart enough to realize that he can't advance it, so he simply lays down to you with an excellent opportunity to get some points on the board before halftime. Bill, Bill McCartney had lamented before the game and even throughout the course of the preceding weeks that CU had not come up with big turnovers at big times. This certainly one of them. Colorado, I think it's fair to say, has outplayed Nebraska here in this first half. Anessi looking to throw. The quick drop is incomplete. Looking for Parrick. And there's a late flag on Tim Jackson, the free safety, who hit Parrick long after the ball was incomplete. Colorado will take that. Thank you very much. LaSalle threw the ball behind Perrick, released to tie it in. They got to tie it in involved in the passing game. As you see the call, personal foul. Perrick had a couple of receptions for 59 yards last week against Missouri. The first that really the tight end had been involved. There's the bump. Not a big bump, but certainly late. And the ball was long past Perrick. You've got to be smarter than that as a defensive back. I think in the Big H, you don't get many opportunities to lay the wood to somebody. And sometimes you're a little bit more aggressive than you should be. Jackson, a senior from Dallas, 6 feet, 190 pounds. He and Fryer both have four interceptions to lead Nebraska. Colorado's got it a first and 10 day with the 24 with 
155 to go in the half. Chance to take the lead at the half here in Lincoln against seventh-ranked Nebraska. The enemy in the game with the ball. Eric with a big hole. He's down to the Nebraska 12-yard line. That should be enough for another. First down and a fumble. And Tim Jackson takes it away, recovers the football. The, the enemy is arguing. Well, he's arguing in vain as the referees have decided he's going to Nebraska. Big hole. Again, the sprint draw. And the enemy gets stood up. As you see, and everybody's tackling the football. And the ball comes free right there. It's tough to see. Tough to see as to when the ball came free. The enemy did not like the call. But Nebraska, again, dodges the bullet. Each team with a turnover, and Colorado has turned it over now inside the 15. They've had two chances to score on Nebraska, and they come away with nothing as Clark can't break the tackle of Michael Jones. With a minute 35 and counting, I'm not sure Tom Osborne wants to take a lot of chances this deep in his own end. It's really hard to tell from that replay if the enemy was still going forward or if he was down or when the ball came out. Simply the referee's judgment. Well, Taylor will throw. He's going to run to the side. A little push pass. A very dangerous pass. It was incomplete. Intended for Carpenter. He really took Carpenter up. Well, when you're playing against an aroused defense on both sides of the ball, this is a pretty good reason not to take too many chances when you're on your 13-yard line. Taylor trying to make something happen. He suckers up one of the CU defensive players and then almost gets... Ooh, ooh Carpenter again. killed. Canavis McGee. Don't you know linebackers love to see guys standing there turning around looking the other so way for the ball? When you're a wide receiver, when you played here in Colorado and went to Browns, and when Cypher, your college quarterback, did that, what do you say when you go back to the ball? <laughs> you say a few things that I can't say in the air, I can say. But well, you're hoping he doesn't throw the football. Well, yeah, you're hoping, please don't throw his knee. Here's third and nine. He wants to throw again. He's got time. Here comes Williams after him. Still with time. Fires. Nearly intercepted by Tim James. So I'm a little surprised at the play calling. Nebraska now with 54 seconds to go with the fourth down at their own 13. Colorado's going to have good field position. Well, I think Tom Osborne has a lot of faith in Steve Taylor. You know, last year when UCLA came in here, the Bruins held the Cornhuskers 117 yards rushing, and they called upon Steve Taylor to lead them out of the wilderness, so to speak. He responded. 10 of 15, 217 yards, and five touchdowns. But in a game like this, with the conditions and the circumstances in the first half, you take a lot of risks, and I think unnecessarily, when you throw the football with 50 seconds to go in the first half. See the Bucks can make something happen. A low line drive to, uh, kick to JoJo Collins. Nebraska territory across the 45. Down he goes at the 44. And a flag down back at the Colorado 43. So I'll tell you, our notes and everything flying around up here. Very, very windy day. 40-yard punt. I think we're closer to the good Lord than we are to the field. This is fun, though. We're having a good time. It's, a it's fun as long game. as the roof stays on. <laughs> yeah, then it, then it may be a little dangerous. The clip on Colorado with 44 seconds to go. That'll move them back into their own territory. You know this score is is raising some eyebrows around the country. Clipping. Colorado on the return. First down. And if folks if folks had a chance to see that CU had an opportunity to score twice, the eyebrows really would be raised. We'll be back in just a minute. 44 seconds to go in the half. We remain scoring. Campbell, Collins, and Pritchard, the wide receiver. There's a handoff to Flanagan. J.J. with a hole across the 50, across the 40 to the 35-yard line. As J.J. Flanagan does it again. What you're seeing is J.J. Flanagan looking like he's running on a dry field and everybody else is playing on a wet field. He's got quicker feet. Watch him run through arm tackles as, again, the sprint draw is effective. I mean, Nebraska is just a step behind him. He looks much quicker than everybody. He's got great speed to start with. 23-yard carry by J.J., and he's shaken up. Look at this. First half, nine carries for 88 yards. And now in your situation, Ron, as CU calls a timeout, a couple of timeouts left. Good field position. You need 10 to 15 yards to make a reasonably easy field goal attempt. 
And without Flanagan in the game, and I'm not sure if the enemy will be able to come back in, you're really up against it. You're using Marcus Relaford, I presume, and some of the other younger backs. The Nebraska defense, again, very, very good against the rush, giving up 124 yards per game this season. Marcus Relaford, number four, who went over 100 yards last week against Missouri. The freshman from Orchard Lake, Michigan, is in the backfield with Eric Kissick. First and 10, 36 seconds to go. The ball on the 36. Vanessi fake. He'll run it. Not much to sell. Down to about the 33. Three-yard pickup. Broderick Thomas, the All-American, made the tackle, and Colorado takes their second timeout. Colorado. Colorado has totally dominated the second quarter. It's been all played in the Nebraska side of the 50. Colorado's average field position to start their drive to 35. Nebraska, their own 23. The key is they've played very well, and yes, they've dominated on the field, but they have not scored a point. And folks sitting at home watching, pulling for the Buffaloes, shouldn't feel too easy at this time because you're going to have to score. And sooner or later, I would think the Nebraska offense will get on track and put some points on the board. It's asking too much of the CU defense, I think, to play the way they have played for the remainder of the game. Take a look at some scores. Fourth ranked West Virginia beating Rutgers 21 10, third quarter. Oklahoma leads Missouri 10 0, first quarter. 17th ranked Georgia out in front of ninth ranked Auburn 7 0, first quarter. 12th ranked LSU leading Mississippi State 13 3, fourth quarter. Ohio State and Iowa 21 21, fourth quarter. Wisconsin leads Minnesota 7 0, first quarter. Clemson out in front of Maryland 42 17, fourth quarter. Here at second and seven from the 33, Onesse with time looking deep and it's incomplete he was looking for parrick the tight end but john was well covered it'll be third and seven with 18 seconds to go in the half time of possession in the second quarter cu eight minutes and seven seconds nebraska six minutes and 35 seconds cu with 95 total yards in the second quarter nebraska with just 39 and that proves the point it has been CU's quarter, but they have not been able to score. I think Nebraska right here really can be very, very aggressive. Third and seven on the 33. You take them completely out of field goal range should you be able to get to an SE if it's a passing situation. Here's Sal with the handoff up the middle to Flanagan. Trying to get enough to give Culbertson a shot at the field goal. He's down to the 30. Eight seconds. Clock running. CU will call timeout with three seconds to go. Lawrence Pete made the tackle. Three seconds remaining in the first. Flanagan was a step away from breaking that one as well. Ken Culbertson will try the field goal. He is six of ten for the year. This one will be around 47 yards where Culbertson is two of three. There is a swirling wind down in the field. I'm not sure it's going to be an advantage or a disadvantage for the kicker. I don't think the wind is behind him, and I don't think the wind is necessarily in his face. But a 20-mile-per-hour wind and coming from, it seems like, every which direction, ought to be an interesting kick. Jeff Campbell will hold. Kick will be of 47 yards. You can see what Ken has done from that distance. It's on its way, but it's going left. Hits the upright. Well, the crossbar and is no good. So that is the end of the first half here in Lincoln, Nebraska. There's been two giants down slugging it out in the pit. And as Tom Osborne runs off, he can't be feeling all that good. His team has pretty much been dominated, although it's even on the scoreboard. They've dodged a few bullets from Colorado, and Colorado runs in, Dave, I'm sure, feeling, hey, with any sort of breaks whatsoever, it could be 10, 14, or 17 to nothing. And a trickle of booze for the Cornhuskers for the second consecutive home game. They didn't play well against Missouri in the first half. They had 15 total yards, but keep in mind, they came back to win the football game, and they put 250 total yards in the Tigers in the second half. So Osborne, very good at making adjustments. Bill McCartney will have to do the same. So we have played one half of football here at Lincoln, Nebraska. Colorado, nothing, and Nebraska, nothing.
Bullets from Colorado, and Colorado runs in, Dave, I'm sure, feeling, hey. hey right now, it's Kate's missed opportunities, obviously. We've been down in there. We, I guess J.J. tried to change the ball over when he fumbled it, and then we fumbled the ball. Was that a good call? On the, 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 what did the TV screen show on the enemies? It was doubtful. They weren't sure. Uh, it, it didn't show conclusively what happened. Well, uh, and then we got a holding call that took us out of field position, and we had a pass that returned. They didn't call, so it's been good. Nothing. Bullets from Colorado, and Colorado runs in, Dave, I'm sure, feeling, hey. hey right now, it's Kate's missed opportunities, obviously. We've been down in there. We, I guess J.J. tried to change the ball over when he fumbled it, and then we fumbled the ball. Was that a good call? On the, 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 what did the TV screen show on the enemies? It was doubtful. They weren't sure. Uh, it, it didn't show conclusively what happened. Well, uh, and then we got a holding call that took us out of field position, and we had a pass that returned. They didn't call, so it's been... Uh, missed opportunities at this point and what we're going to have to do is keep the pressure on and take advantage of our opportunities well your defense has certainly been stopping nebraska's offense defenses even when we haven't stopped them we've had somebody there to make the tackle and he and he hasn't made the tackle so we we need to tackle a little better even okay good luck bill thanks head coach bill mccarty back upstairs dana brinson takes the kickoff he's out across the 25 to the 27 yard line where Nebraska will start with their first possession of the second half. And we can reconfirm for Bill McCartney the replay was really inconclusive. Couldn't tell if the enemy did indeed fumble. Very tough to see. And in a defensive game, you like to have your defense out on the field. CU initially won the toss in the first half. For those of you that remember, Nebraska has had the football both times to open the halves. Good point. Have again. First and 10 from the 27. First man through his carpenter across the 30 to the 31. Pick up of four yards, second and 10. Arthur Walker, number 83, made the stop. Nebraska's not the kind of club that's going to panic. Certainly down points at halftime, you would think they'd change a few things, but the, the game is tied, and they're going to stick with what they do best. Run it up inside, pound you between the tackles, and occasionally go for a play-action big pass. Larkin Carpenter, the running backs. We are scoreless, third quarter from Lincoln. Taylor hit immediately and down. Cole Hayes, number 82, made the first hit. Taylor, who has struggled today, thrown for a loss. Well, Cole Hayes that time on an inside stunt got to uh, Taylor before Taylor could do anything. Here's the fumble Bill McCartney was talking about. CU having a chance to put points on the board, a good run by the enemy. Now he's gonna be stood up and it's tough to see if the football comes out before the enemy's knees actually go to the ground. There's the knee on the ground. You can't really see the football. I thought the first time looking at it objectively that he didn't fumble, but that replay you can't tell. Third down, Taylor dancing around, rolling out. Across the 30 and on second effort, Taylor gets out to the 36 and then Hayes ran him out. I believe he's about a yard short though of a first down. Well, he's got tremendous athletic ability. A couple of Buffaloes had shots at Taylor well in the Nebraska backfield. And with speed like that and the ability to break tackles, Taylor almost turns that thing into a first down. Good job again by CU forcing Taylor out of the pocket and making him try to run for that first down. Broker on to punt again. He's done that a lot this afternoon. Campbell 84 and Collins 16 are deep. 13 and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Collins lets it bounce at the 28. And then dangerously <laughs> dives on it at the 22. Well, that's the kind of play that makes Bill uh, McCartney's heart stop a little bit. Can't say as I blame him. Jojo Collins with very good hands. You try to get in front of everything, certainly when you kick it. And that time, making a very, very dangerous play. Interesting to see now if CU offensively can once again get things cooking and get out of their own side of the field. And the Nebraska fans starting to be loud, and the defense sort of looking like they're ready, too. Colorado first and 10 from their 33. Pritchard in motion. Here's J.J. Flanagan. He's out to the 27. Leroy ATN. Senior of New Iberia, Louisiana made the tackle. Don't forget, and I doubt you have, tomorrow at 2 o'clock on Channel 4, the Broncos 
take on Bernie Kosar and the Cleveland Browns live from Mile High Stadium. It's the Browns versus the Broncos tomorrow afternoon at 2 here on Channel 4. The man to my right had the privilege of playing for both teams. A decade for the Browns and a cup of coffee with the Broncos. <laughs> And that's uh, putting it nicely. Here's Flanagan. J.J. to about the 29. ATN again. One of the last ones off that pile, number 47. Here's a situation where CU has struggled the entire year. Third down and short. Actually, third and four. I'm not sure you'd call that short. But they haven't been effective in trying to pick up a, a short bit of yardage. Nebraska defensively starting to stunt their own self up front moving a lot of people into the gap and trying to prevent CU from getting into that option attack crowd now for the first time in the, uh, today making a little noise on third and four from the 29 Flanagan's going to be way short down he goes across the 30 Kent Wells and Jeff Mills were both there See you going back to the sprint draw had it been effective in the first half, but they didn't give it time to develop. You've got to make sure you get the football back to the eye back some seven or eight yards deep. That time they kind of got it confined, and the backside didn't do a good enough job of sealing off that, that defensive rush. And Nebraska's had to have to adjust. So you may have to come up with a, a different plan of attack as English. High kick into the wind. Brinson makes the fair catch at the Nebraska 26-yard line. 11 and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Colorado trying to pull off the upset. They are really... Canavis McGee runs them out at the 29. Fine play by McGee. Two-yard pickup. Well, Nebraska's had the same kinds of problems running wide that Oklahoma did against CU. Canavis McGee and Alfred Williams, two big, long-legged, long-armed guys on the outside that you just have trouble blocking. When you try to block him with a tight end, you use your best blocker, you can't seal the linebackers. When you try to block him with a running back, more times than not, the running back is a physical mismatch. So CU doing a good job on the outside of the defense. Second and seven from the 30. CU's defense. Outstanding this afternoon. Delay handoff to Clark. Reinhardt has him wrapped up at the 32. Tom, the senior out of Heritage High School. It'll be third and about five. I'd like to thank our statistician today, CU's SID Dave Platty, and our spotters, two CU students, Aaron Harrison and Doug Strauss. Everybody's done a fine job. Lovely booth up here in Lincoln, about eight miles high, <laughs> at 40 mile an hour winds. Perfect afternoon for football. Here's Clark. He's going to be short. Deluzio hit him first. Walker and Jones drive him back, and Colorado has stopped Nebraska once again. And Even at the 10 minute mark, 10 30 and counting, what you're seeing, I think, is, is now both coaches starting to play with the idea that their defense can stop the opponent. Very, very conservative play calling by the Nebraska Cornhuskers. They just got a lot of faith in the defense. And on the other side of the football, CU is going to have to pick it up a little bit and try to make a big play offensively. Croker is on to punt. Campbell and Collins are deep. Oh, a big rush, and Croker just did get it off as David Gibbs is putting the rush on. Colorado will have it inside their 20 when we return to Lincoln. 9.58 to go in this third quarter. It is still nothing, nothing. What's better than back in Lincoln, Nebraska? Is the attention beginning to mount here as Colorado, a 19-point underdog, has the football in a scoreless tie. Flanagan. No room for J.J. this time. ATN hit him right at the 20. Go to the sidelines and Bobby Anderson. Ron and Dave, I was in the locker room at halftime for Eric Scooter Bienemy, who only needs about 89 yards to move into second place for a single season rushing record, practically had tears in his eyes. He will not return. He's got a pretty seriously pulled right hamstring. So you're going to see J.J. Flanagan. J.J., by the way, had been kicked in the calf, and but he's okay now. Of course, we always have Marcus Relliford to back him up, who had 100 yards last week. Back to you guys. Thanks, Bobby. So 
If you look at Brian Carpenter of Nebraska on the, on the bench, that apparently is it for Eric Bieniemy this afternoon. Second down and ten. The ball on the twenty. Fake pitch. Vanessi under pressure. Throws and incomplete. Looking for Parrott. Number 17, Reggie Cooper. Was there. Broderick Thomas was putting the pressure on Sal and Essie. Well, a fake pitch trying to slip somebody into the flat is fine as long as the outside linebacker on the weak side doesn't buy it. Broderick Thomas that time didn't go with the fake. He's right in the passing lane of Sal and Essie and forced and Essie to throw the football a little too soon. Nebraska really has started to cheat up their inside linebackers and both their outside people, even the strong safety, playing three or four yards from the line of scrimmage, forcing CU to throw the football. I wonder if they shouldn't look for Campbell. They tried early in the game to jump. Anessi, play action. Throws and it's incomplete. He was looking for Pritchard. And Mike could not hang on as Thomas and Wells were back there and they really gave a shot to Sal Anessi as the Buffs will have to punt from their own 20. But Roderick Thomas, before the game, this week said he wanted to make this contest his most memorable of his career, his last year at Nebraska, and he's had a fine game this afternoon. Brinson and Bell are deep. English, the nation's leading punter, averaging about four yards under his average today, but tricky winds have made that a little tougher. A fair catch by Bell at the Nebraska 41. That's one of the better starts for Nebraska. What's happened the last couple of possessions, the Cornhuskers have gained yardage with their punting game. They forced CU into long down situations. The punting game for CU forced almost into their end zone. And Nebraska now at their 41 really has gained a lot of yardage simply without even moving the football. A 33 yard punt by English. The crowd now trying to get the Cornhuskers are back into it. It's crowd been pretty silent in the first half. They've picked up a little here in this third quarter. Bell is in motion. Taylor to throw on first down. Now he'll run. He's got a crease. He's got more than that. Deluzio finally pulls him down at the Colorado 40. That's a 19-yard pickup for Steve Taylor, his longest run of the afternoon, and a first down. And you haven't seen much of Taylor this afternoon, but he's a guy that, uh, for the last three years, has been the leader on the offense. Great, great speed. And that looked like a passing play that Taylor immediately decided he wanted to turn into a run. Good job. 19 yards by Taylor, first and 10 from the buff 40. Quick pass over the middle, it's complete. To Milliken, the tight end. Bruce Young made the tackle at the 31. We've said all afternoon that Nebraska very, very basic. They like to run the football. Once they get in your side of the 50, they'll do all sorts of things. A little quick pop to the tight end. This is where Tom Osborne really if he desires, likes to come out of his uh, bag of tricks, so to speak, and throw everything he has at you. The reverses, all the trick plays, the flea flickers, this is the point of the field that you can expect Nebraska to do things like that. I believe that's only the second reception this afternoon for Nebraska. 8.28 to go in his third quarter. First half went very quickly. It slowed down a little bit here in the third. Second and one, a very good time if Nebraska desires to try to get the home run play. You'll come back and third and one, run something short, but I wouldn't be surprised to see Taylor go up top. Bottom of your screen is Morgan Gregory, the kid from Manuel High School. Clark runs it up the middle for a first down to the 25. Tom Reinhardt made the tackle. Colorado's defense has stopped Nebraska all day. And they have to do it again. If they want to stay in this ball game, they've had every chance to score and have squandered their opportunity. Nebraska, this is really their first legitimate drive. Here's Clark. He's got a block. McGee finally knocks him down. At the Colorado 20, five-yard pickup, second down and five. And you get the feeling as good as the CU defense has played this afternoon, they might be starting to wear down a bit. Look at the folks out in front of Clark. Good blocking, doesn't look like he gains a lot, but that's five or six yards right there as Clark runs tough, tackled by Canavis McGee. 65, Andy Keeler, the junior left guard, really sealed off the outside for Clark. Clark is 
Not had a really big day today. He used contained him rather well. Second and five from the 20. Taylor stops. And he's hit by McLuhan, and down he goes at the 20 for no game. So Colorado solved the option. This is Nebraska's first penetration inside the Colorado 20. Shows you the kind of defensive effort Colorado has had today. Steve Taylor had a seam there, and Dave McLuhan simply got off a block quicker than Taylor thought he might. McLuhan, the sophomore from Loveland High School. Think he's concerned over there? Well, I think right now he's got to be thinking, keep the ball in Steve Taylor's hands, 34, get him into the opportunity to play, and let him make something happen. Big play in the ball game, third and four for Nebraska. On a scrimmage just inside the Colorado 20. It's right up the middle to Carpenter. I believe he's going to be a little short. Michael Jones, Tom Reinhardt in on the stop. I think you have to, if you're Tom Osborne, go for it here. Fourth and one, you've had a real good drive. You need to put points on the board, yes. But a touchdown certainly, emotionally, is much more devastating to Colorado than a field goal. They're going to go for it, it appears they are. Fourth down to long one. They've got to get just shy of the 15-yard line. The pitch to Clark. He's got the first down. He's inside the 10 to the seven yard line. First down for Nebraska. Tim James, the strong safety, made the tackle. A big fourth down conversion. Well, a dangerous play if you get any kind of penetration. When you toss that football back seven or eight yards, you got to make sure up front you're doing a good job. And the Cornhuskers did. Clark able to turn the corner untouched. And a big fourth down and one and a half conversion. First and goal from the seven. Clark is 5'9", 200 pounds, a junior from Omaha. Nebraska's deepest penetration. They're looking to score first. The pitch to Ken Clark. Cuts it inside. James hits him, but he's all the way down to the Colorado three. James hit him first. Second and goal from the three. They continue to pound on you, averaging 46 points per game and over 400 yards on the ground. They feel they can wear you out. I think Colorado a bit tired. Nice touch by Clark as he gets past Williams before being met by James and a host of others. This has been a long drive, and again, when you're that big up front, you just tend to wear people down. And a good job by Tom Osborne realizing that and not abandoning his game plan simply because they've been scored at half. Clark averaging six and a half yards of carry through the season, but not today. Averaging less than five. There's the pitch to Clark. He's got blocking. He's into the end zone for a Nebraska touchdown. scores first. Same play they got the first down a couple of plays ago and a good job. Clark untouched, unchallenged to the corner. And he just knew that sooner or later they'd get that offense on track. Greg Barrios, number 44, the sophomore, is on for the conversion. It was 435 to go in the third quarter. Nebraska has struck first. The ball in yeah, I couldn't figure that out. Simple. The defense was in the zone. There's only one place to find out the real story. No way. It was because the secondary was dropped. No. no. Burrios with the conversion. And now the crowd has come to life a little bit here in Lincoln. Of course, they expected a victory all along. I don't think anybody here really felt that Colorado could come in here and beat Lincoln, uh, beat Nebraska. They have that kind of an attitude here. And a well-deserved attitude based on the, the last 19 years or so when they've won at least nine games per year. Chris Drennan kicks off. Pritchard has got it. Good run back by Mike. He's across the 30 to the 33, so Colorado will have good field position. And a good job by Nebraska up front. See if you can see a white jersey from this angle. You see Alfred Williams go to the turf 
and that's about it. An impressive drive and a time that Nebraska had to answer. And now it's up to see you offensively to get something established. So I'd like to go down and score as you take a look at the scoring drive, but it's more important to move the football to the other side, and then if you have to punt, fine. Make Nebraska play on their side. The second half has been played in CU territory. And that's the slant in. He was looking for Pritchard. It's incomplete. And it was tipped by somebody on that Nebraska defensive line. So a very important series for Colorado as Anessi is 0 for 9 throwing the football this afternoon. Darian Hagan, by the way, was banged up the last couple of weeks. He's back uh, with the club on the trip. He's the backup quarterback. Second and 10. Campbell is the wideout. Hand off to Flanagan. He looks to pitch it back to Anessi. He does. And Pritchard has it, and he's out of bounds. I don't think it ever went to Flanagan. I think Anessi faked me out and flipped it out to Pritchard. Well, he faked out the red jerseys as well, so don't feel bad. <laughs> when you run the option to the short side, you've got to have a good job up front of sealing down. There's the fake, and Anessi doing a good job taking the correct angle and waiting to the last minute to pitch. Had Pritchard had a little more room, he could have gone for a substantial amount of more yardage. Again, important for CU to answer the crowd and answer the Nebraska drive by not necessarily scoring, but by moving the football and putting Nebraska down in their own end. Third and one. Flanagan has a first down. Plays it, 23. Strong safety made the tackle, but J.J.'s out to the 44. That's a first down. Well, Mark Blazik is a big, strong safety at about 205 pounds, and J.J.'s running a little bit too high right there. You'll see the collision. Blazik puts his hat right in Flanagan's chest. It is a first down. See you now. If you're going to throw the football, you want to do it on first down. You don't want to be forced into third and long. The Nebraska defense, let's give credit where credit is due. They turned it up a notch. They're playing everybody forced up inside trying to get CU to throw the ball. And they just played better here in the second half. 15 carries, 101 yards for Flanagan. Kissick tries the middle and really nothing there. Kent Wells, number 91, the right defensive end, hit him first. Pritchard's nine, Flanagan's two. And Nessie has it, keeps it, cuts it up to the 48. Blazik hit him again first, along with Caliendo, the linebacker. The same type of option play. And that's a play that in the preceding week, Stalin Ezra was picking up eight, nine, ten, twelve yards. That time the Brass was very, very quick to close, and they get some good support from both stations. Third down and six. Colorado from their own 48. Manessi. He's hit at his own 49, falls forward to midfield, and that is it. Blazek 23 and Reggie Cooper 17 combined to make the tackle on Sal, and Colorado will have to punt for midfield. But as you said, they may have helped turn the uh, field advantage back their way. That last play is a, a play where, as a quarterback, you need that great speed. And Nessie's been effective the entire year because he's got extremely good quickness. But when you get stretched out and you've got to run to a point, and you get chased down by that linebacker or safety, you don't have enough speed to make it. English, a high punt. Brinson calls for the fair catch at the 13. So Colorado has regained the field position. Don't forget the Dan Reeves show Monday night at 6.30 right here on Channel 4. We'll talk about the Browns game, and we will have a special mystery guest. Monday night at 6.30, a mystery guest. I will not even tell you who that mystery guest is. I can assure you folks I will find out on the plane ride home. Well, you may if, if you use methods that, you know, <laughs> you've been known to use, you might find out. My threatening method. Yeah, you're, we're going to have a mystery guest. A lot of surprise, so don't, don't uh, miss the Reeves show on Monday night. First and 10 for the Huskers from the 13. They have the ball in a 7-0 lead. Clark running hard across the 20 to the 23. McGee hit him first. 
McLuhan finally drove him down. That's close to a first down. Now the CU defense with good field position. It's up to them to rise to the challenge and force Nebraska to stay on their own end. The offense didn't score, but they were able to move the football a little bit, punt effectively, and force Nebraska to go 88 yards. Second and one, you certainly can't give up nine yards on first down. 123 in county. You see the clock to go in the third quarter. Here's Clark again. He's got the first down across the 25 to the 26. Canavis McGee and Dave McLuhan, both there. Canavis McGee just gets better and better every week. And the Colorado defense with McGee and Williams, certainly they're going to be factors for the next couple of years. Good job up front by Nebraska. Jake Young, the all big eight center, 260. Keeler and Nelson, the guard, 260 and 265. Sled at left tackle, 270. And Doug Glazer, 295. And not to be redundant, but they tend to wear you down after that. There's a big hole up the middle for Clark again. He's out across, not, excuse me, not Clark, it's Carpenter, across the 35 to the 37. That's another Nebraska first down. Brian Carpenter, 5'10", 200-pound junior. I think Nebraska's bigger up front than the Broncos. I think they average more, uh, more weight up front than Denver does. But they usually get some big folks up there. They teach them how to drive block. They're exceptional drive blockers for that meaning the ability to block for the run. Reverse. There's the fake reverse. Clark keeps it. Jones and Reinhardt made the stop. Good fake. Very good fake. I mean, Osborne now feeling he can do a few of few of the things that, that make it tough defensively. They throw the fake reverse. They'll throw a pass here or there. and starting to feel like they're taking control of this football game. And they may be. That was the final play of the third quarter. Take a look at the replay. You'll see the reverse coming to the bottom, but Clark keeps the football. Actually, there's a couple of CU Buffaloes running the other way. So we've played three quarters from Lincoln, Nebraska. Toronto has not completed a pass. Nebraska has 18 yards and total yards. Nebraska's got it second and five from their 42. 59 of those total yards in the last drive. So CU defensively up to this point doing a very good job. Here's the handoff to Tyrese Knox in the game. Across the 45 to the 46. Time of possession in that third quarter. Nebraska over nine minutes and CU less than six minutes. It's kind of been the story today. Let's go to the sidelines and Bobby Anderson. They have just taken Alfred Williams to the Colorado locker room. I don't know what's the matter with him. They said they're just going to check him out. 91 Lamar Gray is in an outside linebacker to replace Alfred Williams. We'll see what's wrong with him in a moment. All right, thanks, Bobby. As they check for the first down, it appears they have it. They do. Alfred Williams, one of the factors on this CU defense. Lamar Gray is a 6'1", 225-pound sophomore. First and 10 from the 47. 14 and a half minutes to go in the football game. Clark's got a hole. Clark's outside. He breaks the tackle. Young finally brings him down inside the Colorado 30 to the 29. Another Nebraska first down. 24-yard run and a first down by Ken Clark. Counter motion, and there are some big fellows up front that are doing a great job of sealing the CU down inside. As you see, Ken Clark not even touched until he's 25 yards downfield. Nebraska may be wearing down this Colorado defense, which has had a fine afternoon. You can see some of the blocking right there as Tom Reinhardt gets blocked. They're so big and strong that once they get moving and you start to tire a little bit, it makes for a very long afternoon. Taylor to throw on first down. Now he's going to run down the sideline, inside the 15, inside the 10. He loses the football. Reinhardt is on it at the Colorado 2. First down for the Buffaloes. Now, yeah, most college football games are decided on four or five big plays. Nebraska's made a couple this afternoon. Here's a big play by the CU defense. Steve Kaler wants to score. He has a chance to dip out of bounds, but he keeps his balance 
And you can see Lamar Gray stripped him right there, and the ball miraculously stays in bounds. Tom Reinhart with the recovery, and CU dodges a big bullet. And now the fans will certainly come alive as CU pinned deep in their own territory. Here's where you really have trouble if you're an offensive coordinator trying to find something that will give you the ability to move the football, and yet you don't want to take too many risks at turning the ball over. Well, that play right there kept Colorado in the football game. Plain and simple, first and ten. Vanessa can't hear, and that's going to be a problem down there at that end of the field. It's closed in, and it's very loud. Reminiscent of what happened in Iowa on CU, what turned out to be the last drive, and Vanessa could not hear the Iowa fans up in a roar. And the referee finally had to quiet the crowd down. Well, if Colorado's got a big drive in him, now's the time. 13.55 to go in the fourth quarter. Again, you'd like to see him drive 97 yards, but being realistic against this defense, it's going to be very difficult to do. What they'd like to see happen is to see you to punch out three or four first downs, and at worst case, punt the football down again in the Nebraska end. See if Vanessa can... Get the playoff. He does, and it's not really going to go anywhere. Flanagan is. I'd say stop to the line of scrimmage. The Leroy ATN was not blocked. Number 47, who's the second leading tackler of the club. And Again, you're limited offensively when you're this deep in the territory with regard as to what play to call. You want to be safe, you want to try to make the first down, and sometimes those two terms are not so on Kissick and Stone check into the game right now. Colorado wants to bull this thing out. They've got Parrick and Stone, two tight ends in there. Kissick 33, Hemingway 22, and Flanagan 2 with a back. Here's J.J. Up and over, across the middle to about the 7. The pickup of 4, but... It'll be third down and six. CCU, I think, would like to get involved in some sort of option tax, but you run a great risk when you run the option of being forced to pitch the football based on what the defense does, and when you pitch it this deep in your territory, you're asking for trouble. So what they're trying to do is simply line up in the power eye and knock folks off the football. That's pretty tough against the second-ranked defense in the Big Eight. So what would you do here? Would you take a gamble and throw from your own end zone? Well, I think... I, to say, I think you try to run the option play and be forced to pitch it possibly. And as he has it, the option, he throws, he's got a man open, it's Parrick. John's across the 40, all the way out to the Colorado 49 and a late flag. We may have a face match. It may move it inside the Nebraska 40. Cooper and Blazer made the plays, and that was a big, big play. The first reception this afternoon for Colorado. That's the biggest play of the game, and might go down as the biggest play of the year, and Nessie throws this thing up. It looked like the wind might hold it up, and John Perry lumbers down the sideline. He's going to get caught, but certainly getting CU out of danger. Third down and seven. Let's see if we can see the face mask right there. And you can see a very good call as Reggie Cooper comes over the top and goes to the face mask, and he said 97 yards might not be feasible, but certainly as you look at 47, it's a lot easier. 42-yard pickup. They add on the penalty. Colorado has it first and 10 inside the Nebraska 47. 12-18 to go in the game. Buff trail 7 to nothing. Hand off to Flanagan. J.J. up the middle, running hard down to the Nebraska 41. Lawrence Peak made the tackle. This happens on all levels of football. Offensive lineman, you're backed up, you're kind of down, it's 7 nothing. things haven't been going well, Nebraska's been stuffing it. Then you make a big play, and all of a sudden, the big folks up front say, hey, wait a minute, we're right in this game, 11.50 to go. That time, a good push by the senior offensive line, second and five, you're in business for the Buffalo. For John Parrick, his fourth catch of the year. None any bigger than that. I think may have drawn Nebraska offside. The flag is down. His pass is batted down. Looked like Roderick Thomas may have jumped a little early. And the way CU is clapping, it appears to be on Nebraska. Depending on where they spotted, it was second and five. That may... Give Colorado a first down. 
believe it is. It is. First down at the Nebraska 36. Offside. 11 and a half Defense. minutes to go in the First game. Down. Colorado with it 36 yards away from tying this one up. clock with 11.29 to go. Hey, you can't say enough about Colorado's offensive line today and the job they have done. Well, they certainly did a good job in the first half. They've been shut down a little bit in the third quarter, I think, largely in part due to the fact that they've been forced in their own territory. And Nebraska has played better defense in the second half. But this is the drive where we have an opportunity with Joe McCarty for the halftime. They have not taken advantage of those opportunities, and you only get so many in the contest. First and ten from the 36. Pritchard in motion. And that's the handoff to Flanagan. Lawrence Pete, number 96, again hit him first. J.J., they'll give him forward progress to the 32. That'll be a pickup of four. Second and six, Kent Wells, number 91, was in his way. In option football, in a rushing attack, you're operable when you're second and six. You can pick up four yards on first down. You can do just about everything in the game plan on second and six. You can throw the ball, you can run the option, you can line up in the eye and then power football. You can do a lot as Joe Garton looks off the field. Joe Garton, number 62, is trying to get off the field. And you can see in the bottom of your screen, he is hurting. J.J. Flanagan right now, 116 yards on 20 carries. He has really done the job as he was forced into duty when Eric Bieniemy went out with a pulled hamstring. Second down and six from the 32. Anessi looking to throw. Now he'll run. Now he's hit by Pete. And he'll go down at the Nebraska 34. Lawrence Pete, number 96, has really played a fine game for Nebraska. Well, see, you tried to sneak Mike Pritchard up the sideline, and the Cornhuskers really picked it up. Charles Fryer did not buy the fake, and Anessi was forced to run. It's tough, too, Dave, when you take such a short drop like that. You've got to get back. If you're going to deliver the football with a drop like that, boy, it's got to be gone. You can't uh, expect the offensive line to keep folks off of it if you drop back two or three yards. It's now third down and about nine yards. You wonder if CU will not try to run some sort of play-action pass. Campbell wide to the left. Collins wide to the right. Passing situation. Play action. Here comes the rush. And that's the avoids Wells. Foul down the sideline. Inside the 30 feet. Has him at the 28. That'll be short by a couple of yards of a first down. And Bill McCartney has a decision to make with 9.46 to go in the game. Now they ran the same play. And Sal has got Mike Pritchard wide open right now. You've got to get rid of the football. But forced to bring it down is good penetration by the Cornhuskers. And now Sal is going to try to knock it up in there and get the first down. Fourth and two, you're forced to go for it. Now, here's a situation when you've got five people telling you what you should run, and somebody's got to make the decision as to what to call. Of course, Bill McCartney not wearing the headsets the past few weeks. He's got confidence in his assistants, and they're making the calls with McCartney running the show. It is fourth down, a long one from the 27. Sal can't handle the fumble, the, the exchange. Flanagan's on it at the 29, but Colorado has botched the opportunity, and Nebraska has the football. A bad exchange between Norgard and Anesti, something that has happened a couple of times this afternoon. And that one came at the worst possible time. So Colorado started that drive on their own three. They were stopped on down at the 27. 9.43 to go. We'll be back in Lincoln in just a minute. Over, it was going to be some sort of counter option with uh, Pritchard being the pitch back, and all J.J. Flanagan can do is pick up the football and try to lunge forward. You can't make key mistakes in a big game like this, and CU has made a number of them. And that one inexcusable. Most coaches will say that's the worst mistake you can make, something you practice on since early in camp as Carpenter, the ball carrier for Nebraska. It's a good look at 
Tom Osborne is squinting into the sun. Been a fine coach. Hard to believe that uh, a couple of years ago, some folks wanted to uh, run Tom Osborne out of Lincoln. He's won nine, nine games, 19 consecutive years. He's only won 156 games in 16 years. I don't know what they want. Good news, Alfred Williams, number 94, back in the ball game. His injury, uh, not serious. And he is lined up at that right defensive end spot. Second and eight from the 32. This is Bell on the uh, wing back around. He's got room. Bounces into his own man, but he's across the 40. Out to the 41. Reinhardt and James were both there. And that's enough for a Nebraska first down. 8.57 to go in the game. First time we've seen this, and this will bring you back a few years, to Johnny Rogers lined up at wing back. In the wing back counter, Rogers made that play so effective. Richard Bell, not a great runner, but certainly good on that one. Let's go down to Bobby Anderson. Back is, as you can see, Alfred Williams is back in the ball game. He had a slight hip pointer. He's back in. Joe Garten sprained his ankle, so that was his problem. Scott Rasmussen in for him. Carpenter on first down is out across the 43 to the 45 with Deluzio slams him to the turf. Pickup of about four, second down and six. Colorado down by a touchdown and this is the, what they don't want to happen now is to have Nebraska keep it exclusively on the ground and work that clock. And put any kind of points on the board. Now they can't afford to let Nebraska score at all now. And at some point here in a couple of minutes, they're gonna have to start to worry about that clock. Here's the pitch to Clark. He's got a convoy in front of him. He's across midfield. James runs him out, but they'll spot it at the Nebraska, at the Colorado 44. Another Nebraska first down. Well, they've gone to the power pitch on a number of occasions in the second half, doing a good job of hooking Canavis McGee, knocking Michael Jones off his feet. And again, Ken Clark at about 5'9 and 200 pounds, able to break a lot of tackles. Nebraska really, over the years, they've had good, strong running backs. You don't see a lot of guys with the dazzle, but Nebraska backs break with so many tackles. Bell 21, Carpenter 29, Clark 32. The fake, the pitch to Bell. Boy, Young had that one snuffed beautifully with the 42. Pickup of a couple, second down and eight. Clock continues to run. He didn't go out of bounds. Second down. 7 nothing Nebraska. The only score, a three-yard run by Ken Clark. Midway in the third quarter, capping off a nine-play, 59-yard drive. Yeah, it's cold here. Second down and eight. Nebraska with the ball on the Colorado 42. Clark's in motion. Taylor looking to throw. James may have been clipped. There's a flag. Taylor's knocked out, but I think James was clipped back at midfield. Well, you can take your pick. Both flags will be on Nebraska, one for a hold and one for a clip. And you're right, Tim James first was held and then was clipped. It's a play for Tim James. A little double dose as the Cornhuskers tried to run the option attack and slip the back into the uh, flat. If you play the back, Steve Taylor will run the football. Let's see if we can see it. There's the call. Clip. Exactly what Colorado needed, though, a break like this to force them into a second and long. Well, the hold right there, you can see as Carpenter's got James by the back, and here comes the clip. As Steve Taylor is outside contained, as Jake Young tries to put a block on James, hits him squarely in the middle of the back. And if you're a CU fan, too bad they can't penalize him twice. That'll move it back to the Nebraska 43. Seven oh four to go. Colorado needs to stop them on downs or make the big play here. They need a little time. They need the football. They need some field position. Second and twenty-three. Dave, it I would seems say like a passing passing down, but I would bet that Nebraska will get Taylor outside and allow him to run the football if he's got anything whatsoever. The C is going to win. They really can't let him convert on the second and third down plays here. Second and twenty-three. Taylor, a quarterback draw. Cross the forty-five. Out to the 49. Michael Jones. Knocked him down there. Deluzio down as well. That's exactly what they did. They run a quarterback draw and allowed Taylor to pick up some yardage. Now you're third and 16 and certainly a lot better than third and 23. We've got a man down. I believe it's Canavis McGee for Colorado. 
Hopefully he is okay because you can make a case that he is Colorado's premier defensive player. And he appears to be in some pain. Well, you're concerned anytime players down in the field and especially worried when they grab their leg and being worked on very gingerly. Let's take a break and uh, we'll be back to Lincoln. 646 to go in the ball game and McGee is being helped to his feet. Look at Steve Taylor. And they are not in their passing set. No, they're not. Play action. Taylor looking to throw with time. Here comes Alfred Williams. Here comes Cole Hayes. Taylor gets it off and it's they're going to mark it a complete at the, at the 40, which is hard to believe, but a flag is down back at the Nebraska 42. Fatsenstein, the receiver. The Bill McCartney, as you can see, certainly doesn't like the call. There is a flag, and I would presume it's going to be a clip or a hold. The clip on Nebraska, judging from where it was thrown. Now you have the option to take the player, force Nebraska to punt fourth and seven. Taylor, with a lot of time, trying to get something with a strong side. You see good penetration by Lamar Gray. There's the hold. Actually, it could have been a hole as well as a clip. Here's the throw. Let's see if he comes down inbound as the penalty comes from the left side. No way. But it's no not way. clearly in the line unless he drugged the right foot. Very, very tough to see from that angle, but it didn't appear to be a good catch. Colorado has taken the penalty. They want to move Nebraska back. They're back at their own 35. Doug Glazer called for the clip. Let's see if we can see if he drags his right foot after he catches the football. He has the ball there, the right foot. Both feet appear to be in the air as he catches the ball. The left foot comes squarely down uh -huh. on the line. That's, that's a that's, bad call. That's a bad. He's definitely not in the field of field with one of his feet. Third and 31. Bell and Gregory are the wide receivers. Taylor with time. Fine time. Throwing a wild one over the middle, which is incomplete. He was looking for Bell. Most of the Colorado secondary had time to get under that pass, so... Good choice by Bill McCartney. Take the penalty. You get an incomplete pass. Colorado should get good field position with 6-12 to go. And an impressive stand by the CU defense. As we talked about, had Nebraska been able to go down and simply get a field goal, this game, for all practical purposes, would have been over. But with 6-12 to go and CU looking like they'll get decent field position, maybe time for one last drive. Collins averages 10.5 yards of return. Campbell, 9 yards of return. Broker is on the punt. This one is coming to JoJo. He'll let it bounce. And it's in the end zone. So Collins makes the right decision. As the CU partisans were sweating out that one, hopefully that it was going to get into the end zone. When we return, Colorado will have it with six minutes to go. They trail by a touchdown. Zero, zero, zero. Nothing. That's how much down you need today. If you're a that you're a foot of four cups. Nothing. First and ten. The handoff to Flanagan. J.J. a hole. He's got six yards. Six was there. You know, I think even with all the missed opportunities, if you'd have told Bill McCartney with six minutes to go in the game, you'd have 80 yards to go and a chance to tie and maybe go ahead in this contest, he would have taken his chance. He would have accepted that. Certainly see you have missed golden opportunities to score early. But a chance right here to drive the length of the field against the Big Eight's best defense. I agree with you. Nebraska, 274 yards total offense. Colorado, 220. And off the Flanagan. J.J. bounces off one tackle. A second tackle loses the football. Let's wait till they unpile. J.J. bounced off two tackles and then lost the ball. It's Colorado's. Well, fighting for extra yardage, that sometimes will happen. Flanagan fortunate that that didn't wind up in the hands of someone wearing a red jersey. That's the sixth fumble for the CU Buffaloes. Last year, they fumbled four times. And fortunately for them, they've lost only one. Third and three. 5-10 to go. Kissick and Stone check into the ball game. The third and three, and they've left two fullbacks in the game. Kissick and Hemingway, both in the contest, in the power eye. Pritchard now running off at the last second. 
Hemingway in motion. Flanagan behind Kissick is going to be nailed and short. Fryer makes the tackle at the 27. No gain. Fourth and three with 4:42 to go. English is not yet in the ball game. And Colorado, I believe, will take a timeout to talk this one over. They will with 4:35 to go here in Lincoln. Let's go down to the sidelines and Bobby Anderson. Well, a little injury update. Uh, you can see Joe Garton limping off the field. He's back in there. He said, men, take me up. I'm going back in. Canavis McGee has badly sprained his right ankle. They've taken his sock and tape job off. He's been in pain on the sideline, so Canavis should not return. The Buffs need to get something going. They're down 7 to nothing. Back to Ron and Dave. Thanks, Bobby. Buffs need to make a decision here. Do they go for it on fourth down? Just from the look on uh, Bill McCartney's face and the people he's talking to, it looks like they've, they've made the decision that they're going to go for it. But if they make it, it's a great call. I'll if, tell you if what. They don't, there's too much time left. I think 4.35 to go, and it's very easy to second guess any coach at any given time. But with this much time, and you still have two timeouts left, I think you have to punt the football. But Bill is going to gamble and go for it. Okay, I disagree with you. I think it's a gutsy call by McCartney. He's trying to win the football game. Four and a half minutes to go. I think he feels that if, if they can't make it here, they're going to lose the game anyway, because if they punt the football, they may not get it back. Well, that's certainly true. If you don't make it here, the game's over. Fourth and three. If it were fourth and one, I might be able to buy it. But let's see what happens. 4.35 to go. They've got to get to the 30. It's playing again. He's got a first down. J.J. across the 35 to the 37, a 10-yard pickup. Well, that turns into a great call, doesn't it? <laughs> J.J. Flanagan able to squirt through a nice hole. They looked like they were going to run the reverse option and just snuck it to Flanagan from the eye back. we got a lot of red jerseys flowing to the outside. See, you have been able to run that reverse option successfully a couple of times. And you'll see ground level as CU offensively does a good job up front. Just a quick hand off the Flanagan, he goes through a big hole. Muhlenberg and Norgard just knocking people out of the way for Flanagan. Hard to believe on fourth and three, Nebraska could allow that kind of a hole. First and ten, Flanagan again. Across the 35, out close to the 36. Pete's on the bottom of that pile. Four minutes to go in the game. This is the drive right here. But no question about it. Now, no matter where you are on the field, you're in four down territory. There's not enough time to punt and go through the defensive sequence. I like that call. Even if he had missed it, I would have on record liking the call. McCarthy has pulled one out here. He's still got 60 yards to go. 343 and counting. Second down and seven. We haven't seen much of Jeff Campbell in the offense. Flanagan. Hangs onto the football. He gets out to the 44. Four-yard pickup. It'll be third and three. Willie Griffin made the stop. The runs are effective, but they are eating up the clock, which is at 322 and counting. J.J. Flanagan really with an impressive afternoon. He's dropped the football a couple of times, but here's a youngster that hasn't had a chance to play most of his campaign. Had over 100 yards a couple of weeks ago in this last week's contest, but he's run effectively here this afternoon. Third and four. CU has a lot of trick plays in their offense, a lot of things, a lot of misdirection things with Campbell. Flanagan is tripped up short of a first down. He may have lost the yard. Jeff Mills in the 42 made the stop. And now with 246 and counting. But now there is no decision. Fourth and four, you've got to... Actually, fourth and five, you've got to go for it. And again, this will be a crucial call trying to come up with something. I presume that Nebraska has not seen this afternoon. Collins checks into the game, and now Colorado, I think, wisely uses another timeout. They, they were not together on the play, Dave, and even though you like to have some timeouts in that last minute, better to use one now and come up with a play that they're convinced can get them a first down. As you see Gary Barnett in the headset, who was on the phones with Jerry DiNardo upstairs. Here's where Bill McCartney obviously has the final say. He's not been involved too much in the offensive play selection the last few weeks. But as a head coach, he's got the right, and certainly I would guess he will use that opportunity to say, this is what I think we should go with. Let's go with the play. One thing about Colorado, they should give an Oklahoma and Nebraska all they want this year. Well, when you think about it, and you never like to look back and second guess, but they were so close to beating Oklahoma, and they've had opportunities here to 
to, to basically take control of the football game in the first half against Nebraska. That's sometimes how things go in a, in a season with a team that is struggling for an identity, a team that is trying to emerge from the rest of the pack, so to speak, and jump up in the national prominence. One of the few CU fans are here in the sea of 76,000 red clad Husker partisans. Nameless McGee is leaving the field on a cart. He's through for the afternoon. If Colorado can keep the ball, the defense may not be playing anymore this afternoon. Fourth and five from the 42. Vanessi will throw. Incomplete. He was looking for Pritchard. Mike was there but could not hang on. Nebraska takes over with 2.26 to go in the game at the Colorado 42. The Buffs have one timeout left. And now Colorado's going to need a turnover. They'll be tackling the football. Give it a go, Dave. They had, they had the play. They had Pritchard. He just couldn't come up with it. Would have taken a perfect throw by an as Nebraska really did a good job up front putting their hands up, but just couldn't come up with the catch. Carpenter and Clark the back. This is Ken Clark, who's had a pretty good day. Inside the 40 to the 38. He's protecting the football. Paul Rose, number 15, and Mike Turns, 59, make the tackle. 212 and counting. Pick up a five, second down and five from the Colorado 37. This is one of those efforts for CU that they'll tell you after the game, yeah, it was a terrific effort, it was great, but it's not going to soothe the pain of another loss to Nebraska, if indeed it turns out that way. This really has been a season of missed opportunities if you look at the two big games, Oklahoma and Nebraska. CU had chances in both to, to win the contest. Clark again, good run, down to the 32. It's going to be close to his first down. Deluzio made the tackle again. And Nebraska can sit on the football now, and this game appears to be over. Well, the minute 40 to go, Colorado has the one timeout left, so barring a fumble, Colorado has let one of their superior efforts in the last, maybe under the Bill McCartney era. This is a good Nebraska so football team. You're right, Ron. Uh, and, and I think certainly should be applauded for their effort this afternoon, but the days of the 69 to 19 scores are over. I think CU giving every indication that they have the ability to play on a par, at least a very close par with the current effort. Clark, a nice run. He got good blocking. He's all the way down to the 20. Bruce Young made the tackle. Well, Colorado has now proved without question that they can play with the big boys in the big eight. That question no longer is uh, left unanswered. Good job up front by the Cornhuskers, they allow Ken Clark to roll up the yardage. Now, I mean this subjectively. If Colorado cashes in on their opportunities in the first half, they have an excellent chance to win. But inside of a minute, Taylor may just down the football at this point. He, that's exactly what he's going to do. Crowd now Bruce and Arthur Walker. Colorado still has a timeout left. I mentioned that CU had scored 41 points in the last four years against the Nebraska Cornhuskers. They've scored only over 20 points one time since 1958. The defense has been able to keep them in the games in the last four or five years and certainly did so today, but they just gave away too many scoring opportunities and had a chance, as you mentioned, Ron, to take complete or at least control somewhat of this football game. Taylor down to the game. I guess Colorado will not use that final timeout. That's the final play of the ball game. A tremendous effort by the Buffaloes of Colorado, but it falls short. Flanagan is running for a touchdown. The ball, for some reason, popped out of his arms. The enemy fumbled it to 12, and Nebraska had the only scoring drive. That came in the third quarter as you look at Osborne and McCartney. 59 yards, nine plays. Ken Clark went over, and Colorado has been shut out seven to nothing by seventh-ranked Nebraska. Colorado was a 19-point underdog. Didn't play like it this afternoon. Just imagine 
What is going through his mind as he walks off the field? Well, I'm sure he's reliving right now all those opportunities they had to score and, and either gave the football away or come up with a costly penalty. Give Nebraska credit for doing what they had to do to win the game, but, but certainly I think the Cornhuskers realized that Colorado, a very fine football team, with a, an excellent chance to win the game. Let's go down to Bobby Anderson. Not to win today, uh, your comments about the football game. Well, Colorado played very well, Bob. They can sure be proud of their football team. They played awful hard, and, and uh, you know, we felt we maybe could have gotten one in here when we fumbled. But anyway, uh, a lot of credit to their coaches and players, and uh, they've got a very fine football team. Well, your team did a nice job on their third quarter drive for your touchdown going north into the wind. Well, we, we did okay, and we're pleased to get out of it with a win. Does the swirling wind in the stadium affect the offensive play bit. sometimes? Yeah, a little bit. It's uh, it really went down as the game went along, though. That was good. Uh, the first part of the game, first half, the wind was a big factor. And uh, anyway, it's good to see you again. Uh, you're always uh, you're always one of my favorites, and want to wish uh, you and the Colorado team well. Okay? Well, good luck to you against Oklahoma next week, Tom. Thanks, Bob. All right. Back to you guys upstairs. All right, Bobby. Thanks very much. That may be the understatement of the day that uh, Nebraska happy to get out with a win. Nebraska fortunate to get out with a win. Nebraska wins at seven nothing. We'll return to Lincoln in just a minute. yards, Colorado 230. 90 yards, Colorado 235. Nebraska a team that averages over 500 yards a game total offense. They're held under 200 yards under their average. Score but seven points. And somehow, some way, find a way to beat Colorado. Here's the only score of the football game today. Culminated a 59 yards, nine play drive. And it really was an important drive, obviously, for the Cornhuskers. They did a good job. They, they took control of the football game. And I, again, you want to stress that had anybody known coming into today's contest that the nation's leading scoring club, the team that averaged over 46 points per game, would be held to seven, you'd think you'd have a pretty good chance to win. But you simply cannot throw away opportunities to score against a very good defense, and that's basically what happened here today. You saw Broderick Thomas waving to his fans. One thing that hurt Colorado. They were one for ten through the air. That won a big third down catch by Parrick. But when you can only complete one pass, it's pretty tough to win a football game. Well, it is tough. I think they were able to move the football somewhat on the ground, maybe uh, to the pleasant surprise of Bill McCarty. But you have to come up with big plays, and you, you only get so many opportunities in a game. So they had uh, three or four opportunities in the first half, maybe one in the second half didn't take advantage and gives Nebraska credit for hanging in there and, and being able to come up with uh, a very hard-earned victory. J.J. Flanagan, an excellent day in relief for the injured Eric Bieniemy. Uh, Flanagan, 28 carries, 137 yards, but as you know, you played here, he'll be seeing that one run forever as he was ahead of the pack, on his way to a touchdown, and the ball came out of his arms. Couldn't tell if he tried to change hands or what, but certainly he'll remember that one forever. Dave, it's been a joy. It was a terrific Colorado effort. Uh, we'll talk to everybody a week from today as we go back home, and we're looking forward to that in Boulder as CU will wrap it up against Kansas State. So the final score, Nebraska 7, Colorado nothing. The executive producer of today's game was Tom Edwards, produced by...